My name is Dominic D'Agostino. I'm an associate professor at University of South Florida, College of Medicine. And this is the Hyperbaric Biomedical Research Lab. And we get most of our funding through the Office of Navy Research. My project specifically is to look at uh, CNS oxygen toxicity, which manifests itself as a seizure. And an exciting part of the project uh, that sort of developed about six, seven years ago was understanding the cellular and molecular mechanism of oxygen toxicity, and it led us down a path of looking at cell metabolism. And more recently, our studies have been uh, focused on using nutritional ketosis in the form of uh, ketone esters and, and also a variety of supplemental ketones to mitigate CNS oxygen toxicity. And we're at the point now where we've tested a variety of compounds and demonstrated their neuroprotective functions. Hi, uh, my name is Angela Poff. I'm a research associate in Dr. D'Agostino's lab here in the Department of Molecular Pharmacology and Physiology at the University of South Florida. Uh, my work focuses primarily on trying to target energy metabolism and cancer. And we work on the ketogenic diet, exogenous ketone supplements, and here in the hyperbaric lab, um, using hyperbaric oxygen therapy as another non-toxic metabolic targeted uh, therapy for cancer. Uh, so what we have here is an example of some of the technologies, unique technologies that we've developed and utilized here at the hyperbaric biomedical research lab. And uh, we have uh, an atomic force microscope that's coupled with a, a laser scanning confocal microscope. And what this allows us to do is to image cells and tissues at high resolution. So we can understand uh, the effects of oxygen and pressure on cellular mechanisms that include uh, the generation of reactive oxygen species, uh, cellular excitability that we can measure uh, with looking at membrane potential, we can look at uh, calcium signaling, and it was a particularly useful tool that uh, allowed me to, uh, to understand that uh, high pressure oxygen is, uh, can be toxic to cancer cells. So we did, uh, early on we did some initial experiments looking at a variety of cell types and uh, were able to demonstrate that cancer cells are selectively vulnerable to a level of oxygen that was uh, observably non-toxic to healthy cells. And uh, that, paper, uh, that experiment resulted in a publication in the journal Neuroscience. And uh, we followed up on, on that work and we are looking at, specifically looking at uh, reactive oxygen species production in uh, a brain tumor cell line that we incorporate in our animal model of advanced metastatic cancer to fully understand sort of what, uh, how various chemical agents, including common drugs like uh, metformin, impact the generation of reactive oxygen species in, in cell cancers. And we think we could further augment that effect with hyperbaric oxygen. So these tools provide us, uh, literally provide us a window kind of inside of the cells to visualize uh, the cellular processes that uh, are enhancing our, our therapeutic effects that we've uh, demonstrated in our animal model, which was part of Dr. Angela Poff's uh, PhD dissertation project. Yeah, we found a synergistic effect between combining ketosis induced with the ketogenic diet and exogenous ketone supplements with hyperbaric oxygen. Um, and so we were able to show this effect in the cell culture line, um, as well as in an animal model um, of metastatic cancer, which is a really aggressive model of when cancer spreads past the primary tumor, um, which is really the point in uh, cancer um, therapy that is very lacking. So tumors that have uh, spread distally are much more difficult to treat. So we were able uh, and excited to see that we found a really nice therapeutic response in this aggressive model of metastasis with the ketosis and hyperbaric oxygen being uh, effective.
Yes, I'm actually taking most of the most of the questions after I'm actually trying to get all the data from the wife over the different weeks during the cancer and all that future and it'll be at the most part. Have the bleach tissue weights? Yeah, so yeah, we have the whole body and then Marcus and then Cap, gas rock, so there's the different quad the thigh as a whole. Yeah. So I it should get medication, I don't know, week by week, week one, week two, week three, how the wasting syndrome progresses over a three-week period. because um, we know at end of life that this game of does have the text, but we don't know if it has it at what stage is it happening prior to the life. So we have indicators of it is happening prior to that point, but we don't know at what stage it gets there. Is it a drop off at the very end or is it happening over a period of time? And so that's important for us to know. Um, we treat the capacity of finding a treatment and the capacity of different catabolic therapies. And um, so this is just the start of that. So we just finished up that multi-week experiment uh, yesterday. So it's a process of just taking the data and putting it in the computer and then deciding based on what we're seeing week by week, what is the most efficacious treatment strategy to do. So um, these are just what we have right now is the whole body, the carcass, without the the fluid. The as well. So that's not a confounding variable. You have CAS, CAP, the gas rock so it's individually split apart. You have quadricep, uh, the partial quadricep, uh, the heart, the liver, uh, spleen, fat mass. So we took the IP and fat mass. Yeah. And then brown out of tissue. Is that easy to get out the whole? IP, yes. But the uh, brown out of those tissue, we had to get it from the shoulder blades. It um, wasn't too bad. Uh, we also got primary tumor. So these are all. We've also got two more progression, progression measures. So um, I'll be putting this in over the next uh, week or two, and then we'll okay. come back and talk about how we yeah. approach treating that. Because I think what we should do is inject the cancer and treat right away, but yeah. it's important to choose like an arbitrary time point, yeah. I think, uh, as we discussed before, yeah. and uh, trying to decide if 21 days is what we think we should look at. This will tell us, I think, if this is the correct time point. Um, to analyze treatment comparison. But if not, we may have to go a little further. Mm -hmm. But that's where it's at right now. I think. Okay. So.